Hey guys, it's Bill and Bob, and today we're going to be doing a new video for the Xbox One Connect. Yep, yep. Uh, we did this prior on the Xbox 360 Connect, yep, which yep. you can find right here if you have an Xbox 360. Uh, the One Connects, we are doing this because Liv just released the new version of their software 0.0.17, which will uh, benefit those who just have one person that are doing the setup. And why is that? Because they incorporated the the Live Viver into Live, so it makes it much easier to do it through your H HMD. So you could just use your controllers, hook it up, and one person can get through it. And that's so what we're gonna show you today. If you haven't watched our Xbox One Connects mod, if you're planning on doing this with an Xbox One Connects, click right here. And then that will take you to the mod, save you a huge amount of bucks. And, uh, and we're also going to be giving you a couple tips and tricks as we go along the way. Yes. So stay, stay tuned. tuned. Stay tuned for we're that. We're going to start the video now. All right. First thing is first. Let's 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 talk about everything that you're going to need to download and install. Um, we want to first thank Exit. Exit for supplying Discord. this link on Discord. So, and when you download this one here, you're going to use the Connect Runtime X64. So right. make sure you use the download button here at the top, which we're covering with our Twins and VR logo. It'll be on the top right hand corner. Download it'll be a zip file. Extract that zip file, and then install the Connect Runtime 64. Now, and if you already have anything installed, like Connect the um, software development kit, SDKs, and everything, kill it all. Yeah, you don't um, need you it. don't need any of it. Just install this, this and then. Let me remind you that this is for the Xbox One that we're talking right. about. Right. If you okay. have the Xbox 360, do not do this. Xbox, Xbox, One. Xbox One. All right. The next thing is that you want to get your OBS set up because remember, we're going to do some tips and tricks later. Um, so download OBS Studio. Then you're going to need OBS Virtual Cam. So you want to get that installed. The next thing you're going to install is the green screen for the, the Connect um, for Xbox One. And you'll know that because over here, there's two different versions. Make sure you grab the correct one. It's It'll the version it. two. Xbox One here. Um, so make sure you download that. And That's also make sure you don't click on this download. Click on the releases and then click on this download. This right. is a zip file. Just and extract it and then run it. Self-contained. Um, and then the last thing you're going to install is Live for, in Steam. The so, Live client. So, download, so look for LIV in Steam. It's free. Um, install that and then we and then we can go on from there all right so let's get started let's do it so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to unzip that connect green screen and put it in a folder and then this is what you're going to see when you open the folder the executable that you're going to run is the one called coordinate mapping basics um, the wpf.exe go ahead and launch that once you do that and your drivers are installed properly for the connect one uh, you should see something display in this green screen now if you don't 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 be thrown off walk around your room because you may be too close to your connect but you should at this point see yourself in the green screen another way to know that it's working in this bottom left hand corner you should see it say running yeah right here so see if it makes sure it's running so you should have this icon on the top and then down here it should say running all right it. so that's that's step one your green screen your virtual green screen is running so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to install now if you haven't done so you need to ins you need to open up obs and then install the um, virtual cam drivers. Yeah, actually do it reverse. Make sure OBS is closed. Install the virtual Inst cam so the drivers. Point to OBS and then make sure it yeah, installs correctly. Yeah, so point correctly. that to your OBS um, studio and then launch OBS because you're going to need to you're going to need to start that in this section. So we're going to open up OBS. Um, default, you're going to see scenes on the left hand side. We're going to keep it that way. We're going to add a source. And in this case, the source is going to be our green screen. We're trying to capture the green screen software that and we're use, running. And use a game capture. Right. So, as game the source. capture, we're going to call this green screen. So, green screen. Okay. All right. And then for the mode, we're going to do a uh, capture specific window. And then for the window, we're going to point it to that coordinate mapping basics. Once you do that, you'll see that the green screen comes up. Now, the, what we're going to try to do now is we're going to try to eliminate Just, all of yeah, the white. We're going to isolate the green screen. Right. So the way you want to do is you want to hold down your alt, alt key, key and then start dragging your sides so that the white disappears and you're only left with green. All right, so you want to, you know, don't be afraid to go in a little bit, but you're you're trying to capture as much green as possible. Getting rid of all the white. And once you do that, then at that point, you want to let go of your, 
your alt and just go ahead and drag it as much as possible. Now, if you watched one of our other tutorials, if you have an Xbox 360 Connect, it will not be in 16.9. Yeah, it it'll, will not be full screen. It'll be 3 And that's fine. There'll, there'll be black bars. Keep it that way. But in the, if you notice on this one, because of the higher resolution, we have it full screen. Once you have Steam running, go ahead and download Lib. You should have this icon here. You want to opt into the beta. And to do that, right click, go to properties. You're going to have a window that pops up that looks like this. If you go to betas, Make sure that when you hit the drop down, you are on public beta. Try the latest stuff. Now you're only doing this if if 0.0.17 .0 is still in beta. Right. By the time you be, you're watching this, it may have come out of beta, and you don't need to make this step. So once that's, make sure you're in beta. It will download the latest one, launch it. The screen will pop up, and you'll notice that you don't have any virtual drivers installed. You want to install this. So go ahead and click the install button. And it'll tell you that you need to restart Steam. We don't have it open. If you have Steam open, Steam VR, make sure you relaunch it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and say OK. All right, so you're going to go ahead and launch the Steam VR. And then once this comes up, Bob's going to go ahead and start both controllers. Now, you're going to notice that right away at the bottom, you don't see the virtual controllers for Live. And then they'll pop up, turn green, and then they'll, they'll gray out. So don't worry about that. That's going to happen. Um, once that comes up, go ahead and launch the compositor. When you launch the compositor, the virtual controller will start for head tracking. So Live will be up. You'll notice that now you can see yourself in the in the screen. And we can go ahead and start the camera setup. So once this is launched, you're going to see an option that says camera. So make sure you click on camera. And you should see, it may say my camera when you first launch this. If you do, uh, just ignore it and click on add. This is going to allow you to select your devices. You want to select the OBS camera. And at the very bottom, if you want to name it whatever you want, you can call it. You can keep it new camera or name it whatever you want. Uh, we're going to call it Connect Xbox. And then select your frame, your, your resolution, your frame rate. At this point, you want to click on Calibrate. Um, and this is where the Viver is now integrated in with um, in, in the live, live client. I want you to take note of something. This, this right now says three frames per second. So right. let's begin the calibration. We'll start there and we're going to show you how to use uh, the, the controllers with, with, the, uh, with calibrating. All right, here's a little tip. Because you're calibrating your Xbox with um, the Kinect for your room, when, you use it, when you're using anything black, it has a hard time picking it up. You'll matter of fact, you'll notice that even after setting it up, your HMD, because it's black, it may be a little bit see-through. So while you're trying to calibrate and you're putting this, because the first step is to put this up against the camera, this may have a hard time seeing it. So a good tip is to just take blue painter's tape like this and cover your um, your joystick, your your controller. Yeah, your Vive controller. With with blue painters. And you can, use, you can use any color you want. The brighter, the better. We just happen to use blue and right. I picked it up. So it, the whole idea is to get this circle visible in the software. It helps. So yeah. this, when you're putting it up, now again, putting it on, and then if you're, if you're never moving your uh, Xbox Connect, then you only ever have to do this once. once. So don't move it and you do it once. If you're constantly moving, keep some blue painter's tape. It makes it easier. Yeah, just keep just it around. slap it on there and then try to do so the calibration. With that said, let's begin the calibration. Yeah, let's start the calibration now. Okay, so this is how you calibrate. You're going to click on Begin Calibration. All right, so once the Start Calibration window pops up, here's what Bob's going to do. He's going to take his remote preferably the one with the blue tape on it. And he's going to walk directly up to the Xbox Connects uh, one. And he's going to almost literally touch the circle to the front of the lens of the camera. And that's if you're looking at your Xbox One, there's an LED on the far left. It's just to the right of that LED. So Bob's going to walk up. I'm going to step out of the way. He's going to I'm walk gonna start up. start the calibration. Yeah, he's, he's starting the calibration in the software on his headset. Um, you'll see that on the screen now, it says press your trigger button to continue. I'm going to press trigger. He's going to press trigger, and that's going to put an X on the screen. So this is where he walks up to the connects. He's going to literally almost touch the connect lens with his controller and press the trigger. Okay. All right, so once that's done, you'll see another X come up on the top right-hand side of the screen. That's here. 
What Bob's going to do now, now most people think that they need a square area to do this. And you don't. Just literally think in square. Think in that dimension. So we have our the Xbox One Connect on an angle. So what Bob's going to do is when he's going to draw a line across the front of his Xbox in the play area. So he's now trying to get the blue. If you notice on his right hand, you can't see the 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 controller. And on the hand with the blue on it, you can kind of see the blue circle. What you want to do is get the circle on the X. And, and Bob can also see a laser in his... his right. Can you see the laser? Yeah, we can see the laser on the screen. This, Although it's kind of hard to see. What, what he's doing is he's trying to face the laser to the Xbox right. Connect as well. So get the circle of your wand, your Vive wand, on the X and see if you can get the laser pointed to your Xbox uh, Connect one and then press the trigger. Just, I'm just making sure the laser. You want to take your time on this part because the better, the more accurate you are at this, the better, the better calibration is going to be. So now he's stepping over to the other side of the room on the same angle and he's going to put the X down on that. He could still see the blue. Now this I'm going to have to guess. Yeah, but you'll know almost kind of where it is. And then he's going to make sure the laser is kind of pointing to the camera and he's going to press the trigger to calibrate that. Okay, so now he's got the controllers in his hand. And if he picks them up, he can now see whether the controllers are somewhat accurate. Now don't worry about if it's not like completely, completely on. Um, Cause this is where you want to play with the X, Y, and Z to make sure you get the, the controllers. But he's kind of accurate there. So Bob, looking, looking in your headset, what do you think you have to adjust? Um, I don't know. That's pretty good. That's pretty accurate. If you were, if you were off, you can look down on the screen, Bob, if you look down for a second, you'll have controllers, which is position where you can move them. Let's say, um, they're both off to the left. You can move it to the right. I wouldn't do it if you're right, but you can slide those sliders to adjust the controllers. Um, if you find that the controllers, meaning the, the virtual controllers in the air are in further than your actual controllers, they're both in, then you may want to stretch out the field of view or decrease the field of view to, to move those virtual, both of them out to match the other controllers. If you, if they're reversed, then the virtual controllers are outside both of them of the ones that you're holding, bring in the field of view in order to adjust that, to accommodate the, uh, the controllers and you'll have an easier time with it. So the next thing Bob's going to do is he's going to control the latency. He's going to adjust for the latency. So he wants to swing his hands. And if you could see that the controllers are not matching his hands. If he looks down and takes the latency and he drags that up, um, you'll see that the controllers start to go a little bit better and he they're starting to match his actual physical controllers. And he wants to keep doing this until he gets to a sweet spot where the controllers are in sync with his hands. I think that snapped back at 14. No, it snapped. It keeps okay. going back to the emergency. So, so he's getting closer. 16. I'm going to go to 18. That's getting closer. It's getting closer. I'm going to go to 20. Or that's 19. Okay. Still somewhat closer. There's 21. And that's not bad. So do like the whole... Uh, Gangnam style twisting thing of your. Okay, so that's following him pretty well at that point. Would you say that's a go there? I want to go to 22 and see if that. No, I think I need to go back to 21, don't you? Yeah, go back to 20. I mean, 21. Yeah, I think that's good there. So, so the whole goal now, can you walk toward the camera a little bit and see if they're still in position? So you want to move forward to, to your play area. It's just still in sync. They're still, if, if he holds his uh, controllers flat horizontally, they look uh, pretty good there. 
So you want to just take some time and get these as as literally as perfect as you can. If they're a little off, you're not going to be able to tell that much in a game. But in some games you can, some games you can't. Uh, Beat Saver is one of those games where if, if you're not holding them directly in your hands, it's pretty obvious. But I think that's good. I do want so do I. So let's go. If you look, if Bob looks down, um, there's going to be a save button. If you click on the save and watch the screen on your right, a window will pop up. And it's going to ask you, it's going to say it's, it was successful. Your new calibration was imported. So why don't, we, um, why don't we show you now what to do with that import file. All right, next step, what you're going to do is you're going to hit the export button and you're going to choose to file. And for us, we do a lot of Unity games. So we're going to click on Unity and that's the default. So for Unity, by default, this is going to name it externalcamera.config. We put this two places. We put it on our desktop so that it's always there in case we need to drag it. Because once you do this, if your Connect camera is stationary, you're never going to have to move it again. So this config file will never change. So we put it on the desktop, but we already have one. We're going to override it. So we're going to say yes to that. Um, do we want to open up the folder for desktop? No, we know it's on the desktop, so we're going to say no to that. But if you were copying this over to a, like a development software that you're using, you could say yes and then copy this over to the software that you're using the because you need this config file for every game that you're going to plan on right. using. So this config file needs to be in the same directory of, as every executable that you're going to be, every the game executable that you're going to be using Live for. Right, now Live does a good job of doing that for you when you do the next step that we're Which is what here. we're going to demonstrate So we're now. going to say no, and we're going to save this. So once we save this, um, here's a little tip that we're going to give you. We could have just did the whole uh, cropping, and but that's easier to do that with a game launch. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to capture. And in this case here, we're going to choose Peer Head Arcade because it's a little bit different than um, the Beat Saber. I know everybody's doing Beat Saber. Well, we want to show that this can be done every now on any game that is supported. Now, what this is going to do, notice that we put the config of file on the desktop, right? As soon as we launch Peer Head Arcade, it's going to take a copy of that config file and put it in the folder for Peer Head Arcade. So as long as it's a supported game and you use auto, then it will automatically put that config file in the auto. Right. I mean, in the in the folder for the executable. If for some reason your game doesn't work, go to where you saved that file, copy it into that game folder, and then launch, and we'll show you how to do it. Right, now, can you click on target resolution for a second here? Now, keep in mind that it may be at a high resolution, and you may see this error out. So go, yeah. can you click on You're going to tend to want to put it at 1920 by 1080, but kind of remember, that's 1920 by 1080 for each of the windows that's being launched. Right. So you, you don't want to do that. I, we would suggest just kind of dropping it down. You could try it. It may work. It never works for us. Right. You want to drop it down. If we drop it down to 960, you'll see that it will actually launch the game at 1920 by 1080. Right. And well, that's what we want. And so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to launch that game. And we'll launch it. It will copy the config file as it's launching over to that. And it's going to launch the game. So we just launched Peerhead Arcade. Now, remember, your controllers need to be on before you launch Peer or whatever game you're going to launch. Um, am I going over? Yeah, Bob will go over. I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and control the software and we'll show you the easier way of um, doing the next steps before we before you actually go on. So Pure Arcade, you'll notice Bob's now in the game. Um, yours may not look this way when you first launch it. Uh, your, yours may look a little bit different. So let me move this window out. If you click on while the game is running, you may have black stripes going on your left and your right, depending on how you set up your, your OBS software. If you click on camera and then click on edit here, you can go back into calibration. I'm sorry, uh, go back into keying. When you're in keying, if you look at Bob and look at the actual window, the output right, window. This way. Okay. Yeah, there you go. If I change this threshold while Bob is standing there, right now I'm at 0.44 and it looks pretty decent, but if I change it, you'll see that I can actually adjust the keying while Bob is in game. So if you have somebody that can help you, this, this may be a good point to say, hey, can you, can you just stand in the middle of the play area while we adjust these settings and then adjust these settings to uh, accommodate your green screen and, and kind of... Uh, Take the halo out of the green. Try to get as much of the person in play as possible. It, 
once you get that correct, I mean, it take time to mess around with this. Also, has a lot to do with lighting. In our play area, we actually have almost no lighting yeah. on. Yeah, there's nothing. On. So there's practically nothing on at this point, uh, for as far as lighting is concerned. Go to cropping, and this is where you can crop out any black that you see. So let's say you have a green screen that's that starts here and here. You can crop that out by uh, adding stuff to the left and right. Nothing's going to happen because our play, our green screen that we set up in OBS filled up the whole screen. But what you want to do here is drag the number up to accommodate what uh, black you have in your OBS to uh, to make the game in full screen. I hope that makes sense. It, it does if you go back to our Yeah, if you go back to the 360 video and watch the cropping portion of it, you'll see because because the Xbox One is is the full resolution of what we're playing this game at, there's really no cropping that needs to be done. So um, there's really nothing to do here. I could just hit save, right? Um, there's, there's, if you watch the next part of the video, we're going to go over some great tips uh, for things that you can do while in the game and also how to make your play area look extremely large. So we can make Bob uh, look a lot bigger in the play area. But right now, if he goes in and, and plays the game, he'll be in the game. You want me to go in? Just go, go behind something if you can, okay. just to show that you are actually... Now, take note that his the black on his uh, headset is okay. currently uh, transparent, and that's what we were talking about with the, with the blue. So try to get as much of the green screen uh, calibration under the camera settings that you can. But if Bob goes actually in, you want me to go into the game? or just stand behind something, just go like up past that menu. Okay, let me move this. You'll see now Bob is behind the menu. So it is working. Um, everything is working fine. So that is basically how you set up uh, the new live with your game. If you were in Beat Saver, it'd be the exact same thing. All right, guys, thank you for joining. Um, yes, these are awesome. We we really appreciate all of the great responses we got the last couple of weeks. Are it's you been kidding amazing. me? Like crazy. Um, make sure you follow us on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, all the social medias or Twitter or Facebook. Um, you can find us there. Uh, stay tuned for part two, where we are going to talk about how to fix the latency that you right. get in the video. Which you may see in this video. Um, so don't be thrown off. If there's latency, we're gonna go into how to fix it. In part we're gonna show you tricks like uh, the under the calibration settings, uh, taking down that latency number in milliseconds and then working with latency in OBS. Right. So we're gonna focus a lot on tricks that you can do in OBS to make your OBS streams look better. Right, a matter of fact, there's one that'll make your play area look much larger yeah. than what it is for games like Beat Saber. So it fills up the whole room. Yep. So it looks like you're smaller in the game. Stay tuned for that. And then we're, we're also gonna show you uh, other tricks that you could do in OBS, which you're gonna go, wow, I didn't realize we could do that. So stay tuned for part two. Um, right here, you're gonna find uh, another video and that is gonna be the Mahdi video on the power cable and USB cable. For Xbox for One. For Xbox One. So if you're doing this for Xbox One, look for that here. And if you have a 360, you can follow along with the 360 video here and then alter your 360 video to match what is happening in this video. Or if you need us to do another 360 video with the new uh, Lib software, uh, we can do that as well. So thank you everybody for joining. Until the next time, Bill and Bob, and we are out of here. See ya.